In section 4.3, we will talk about the binomial distribution. So first off, what is a binomial distribution? Suppose that we have a procedure that has only two possible outcomes. We usually refer to them as a success, which is getting what we want, and a failure, which means getting the opposite. We are often interested in repeating the procedure and counting the number of successes we observe. For example, let's say we flip a coin 100 times and count how many times it lands on heads. This results in a binomial distribution. The procedure here is flipping a coin, and every time we flip it, it's called a trial. In this case, a success is when the coin lands on heads, and a failure is when the coin lands on tails. So we only have two options, either a success or a failure. Here are some requirements for the binomial distribution. One, we need to have a fixed number of trials. So we can't flip the coin just an infinite number of times. We have to have some kind of fixed number of trials. We flipped it 100 times. We have a fixed number of trials. Each trial must be independent of the others, which means if you flip a coin and it lands on heads, that should have no bearing on the second trial. And this, this is a perfect example because whether or not the first time lands on heads has no bearing on what happens the second time. Each trial has just two possible outcomes called success and failure. Flipping a coin, you either have a success, which in our case is landing on heads, or a failure, in which our case lands on tails. There's a constant probability, P, of success of each trial, and the complement of which is 1 minus P. The complement is called Q. In our case, the probability of success is 0.5. Half the time it'll land on heads. Its complement is also 0.5 because half the time it'll land on tails. Here are the formulas for the mean or expected value of a binomial distribution. The mean is n times p. Recall n is a number of total trials and p is a probability of success. The variance is the square of standard deviation, but we will look at standard deviation, which is the square root of n, p, and q. Recall, n is the number of trials. p is the probability of success, and q is the probability of failure, or 1 minus p. This is also the probability of failure. Here's an example. About 4% of the population has a particular genetic mutation. 400 people are randomly selected. Find the mean for the number of people with a genetic, genetic mutation in such groups of 400. Well, what do we need for mean? We need n, that's the number of trials. We're looking at 400 people, so n will be 400. p is a probability of success. In this case, the success if the, is if the um, person selected has the genetic mutation. So the probability of success is 4% or 0.04. So the mean or the expected value is 400 times 0.04, which is 16, which means we can expect about 16 people out of these 400 to have a genetic mutation. Here's another example. You flip a coin 200 times. If x is a random variable that counts the number of times it lands on heads, then x is a binomial distribution with n equals 200 because we flipped the coin 200 times, and p equals 0.5 because the probability that it'll land on heads is 0.5. Okay, part A, what is the expected value of x? So the expected value of x, that's equal to n times p, n is 200, and p is 0.5. 200 times 0.5, this is equal to 100. So we expect to observe 100 heads, which means if you flip a coin 200 times, we expect that about 100 times it'll land on heads. 
which hopefully makes sense. What is the standard deviation of x? Well, the standard deviation is given by the square root of n times p times q. We know what n is. n is 200 because we flipped the coin 200 times. p is a probability of success, which is 0.5. Now, q is a probability of failure. In this case, failure means that the coin landed on tails. So q, this is equal to 1 minus 0.5, which is also 0.5. If you multiply 200 times 0.5 times 0.5 and take a square root, then this equals to 7.071. And this is the standard deviation of the coin flip if it's done 200 times. Now here's the next question. Outside of what range of values would you consider to be unusual? Now remember, we learned before that if you have mean, then anything that's more than two standard deviations away from the mean, this is considered to be unusual. Each of these represents one standard deviation. Anything that's beyond two standard deviations is considered to be unusual. So this is one standard deviation, this is two standard deviations, so anything that's to the right of mu plus 2 times the standard deviation, or anything that's to the left of mu minus 2 times the standard deviation, these are considered to be unusual. Well, we know what the mean is. It's 100. We know what the standard deviation is, 7.071. So we can plug that in to get the values which are considered to be unusual. Let's, let's start with this one. Our mean is 100 minus 2 times our standard deviation, which is 7.071. 071. This equals to 85.858. Mu plus 2 times the standard deviation, our mean is 100, plus 2 times the standard deviation, which is 7.071. This equals to 114.142. Now the question is, outside of what range of values would you consider to be unusual? Well, if you look at 85.858, anything to the right of that, anything to the right of 85.858, this is going to be considered to be usual. So to the left of 85, the next integer uh, to the left of 85.8.8 is 86. So if we get below 86 heads, now, on the right side, this is 114.142. So anything to the left of 114.142 would be considered to be usual. So the next integer higher than 114.142 is 115. So anything below 86 heads or above 115 heads is unusual. So if you flip a coin 200 times and you get anything below 86 heads, so you get 85 or 84 or 83, or anything above 115 heads, it's considered to be unusual. Here's a 5% rule for independence. We often use the five, uh, we often use a binomial distribution when we sample without replacement. But these do not satisfy the independence requirement. However, if the sample size is less than 5% of the population size, then we can assume that the independence condition has been met since the change in probability is negligible. Which means if you have a million people and you're sampling a thousand of them, that's less than 5%, so we can assume that each trial is independent. Here's a notation for binomial distribution. S is success, F is failure. P is a probability of success, and Q is 1 minus P, which is a probability of failure. N is a number of trials. X is a number of successes out of the N trials. And P of X is a probability of getting X number of successes. Here's an example. A trainer is teaching a dolphin to do tricks. The probability that the dolphin successfully performs the trick is 35%. Out of 20 attempts, 
you want to find the probability that the dolphin succeeds exactly 12 times. First of all, does this sound like a binomial distribution? There are three conditions to be met. One, we have to have a fixed number of trials. Do we have a fixed number of trials? We do. We have 20, 20 attempts. That's a fixed number of trials. The second condition is each trial independent of others. Is each trial independent? Well, whether or not one dolphin can do the trick has no bearing on whether the next dolphin can do the trick. So each trial is considered to be independent. And three, the probability uh, or each trial has to have two outcomes, either a success or a failure. Well, the success success is the dolphin does a trick. Failure is the dolphin doesn't or cannot do the trick. So because all three conditions of a, a binomial distribution are met, this is a binomial distribution. Find the values of n, x, p, and q. Well, n is the number of trials, so we have 20 trials. Let's go with p and q first. p is the probability of success. Um, the probability of dolphin successfully performs a trick is 35%. So p is 0.35. Q is that it does not do the trick successfully. That's 1 minus 0.35, which is 0.65. Q is a complement of p. And x, it says you want to find the probability that the dolphin succeeds 12 times. x is the number of successes out of the end trials. So we want to find out what is the probability the dolphin will succeed 12 times, so x will equal to 12. Here's another example. You flip a coin and count the number of heads until it lands on tails. Is this a binomial distribution? Let's check the conditions. Number one, we have to have a fixed number of trials. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Well, we actually don't because all it says is you flip a coin and count the number of heads uh, or count the number of heads until it lands on tails. So we keep flipping. Now, it will most likely land on tails at some point, but what if there's a, some weird phenomena and the coin just keeps landing on heads over and over and over and over and over again. In that case, this experiment will continue forever and we will not have a fixed number of trials. So this is not a binomial distribution. Take a look at the formula for the binomial probability and we will talk about the rest of the notes in class.